AEG was one of the big publishers of Gen Con 2021, and we got the chance to go straight to the source and have them show us some of their upcoming titles over the next coming months. Some really cool, exciting projects. One of them you got the chance to try out a little bit of. It is called the Guild of Merchant Explorers. It involves pirates, shipwrecks, and all kinds of cool mischief. Tell us what that one was all about, please. So before we begin, this was a prototype, but that being said, I would still be happy to take this. The way the game works is you each decide a map because there's a bunch of different maps with different rules and that way everyone's using the same map. The first round you're going to be flipping cards that say place three water in a row or place on a grassy field. You'll place your little cubes there. If you fill up an entire area, so like the map will be broken up into hexes like there'll be maybe three grass hexes next to four mountains and on the other side of the mountains three grass. You fill up one of them, you can replace one of the cubes with one of your cities. Once a power card is flipped, though, that's where things get interesting. Because you see, first of all, that ends the round, and all cubes are going to be removed from the board. Cities and your starting points stay, so they're going to be new places for you to build off of. So sometimes you want to build your little cities away to sort of make it another checkpoint. But the, you're then dealt power cards, and each person's going to have their own unique power card. So at first, everyone's probably building the same way or something very similar. But once you get powers, maybe I've gotten one that really makes it easy for me to cross the big oceans and stuff. Well, you've got one that really makes it easy to beat mountains. So all of a sudden, everyone starts growing much differently and becomes this very weird asymmetrical game. This happens for four rounds, so you're going to get a lot of different powers along the way that are really going to change things up. There's also going to be merchant points that if you connect with squares, you can multiply to get more points. There are sunken chips where you can get treasure from. So at the end, you're going to have such a, this weird, unique map. And it technically goes to up to 99, similar to Tiny Towns. It seems like they just want to get everyone in on one game. Yeah, 99 players, that is, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, so anyone who has a map could, could theoretically play along. You know, I guess you do have the cubes, too. Everybody kind of has to have their own copy, right, for every four people or so? I guess so. I'm not exactly sure about it, but it seems like you could probably just fudge a lot of it. I suppose you, know? you could, but they probably want everybody to keep buying the game. <laughs> well, that, too, yes. To so going back to the maps, they also had to, we just played the basic one, but they had really cool ones where some had just impossible terrain. Other ones actually had magic spots that would have different scoring systems you built on it. And all the way they score are on the bottom of the map too, so you can just look at that, which is very nice because you know you're just like, what does this do again? Okay, it's there. It's a nice <laughs> reference card, it's on the map. So each map's rules are attached to the map, so you don't have to look them up in the book. Yeah, this one looks cool. I, I think we need a new word for games like this in tiny towns. And bingo? Uh, maybe bingo, but not the fact that you can play it with a bunch of people. Oh, that, okay. Not that aspect of it. The fact that these are not rolling rights, but they are rolling rights. <laughs> in my, you know, they're, I feel like they're rolling rights in everything but the fact that you're writing. <laughs> because so many rolling so rights game. are about, but the fact that everyone shares the same reason, like usually it's you flip a card or everyone rolls a dice and you all get something, but you have an individual sheet. It's so rolling right ish to me. I think it's interesting that similar kind of experience. Like, I don't know how what they call this game in terms of its genre, but that's always what it makes me think of. Uh, and of course, rolling rights also often let you play with large numbers of players mm -hmm. the same exact way. Uh, but it looked really cool. It looked it looked like there was a lot of fun stuff going on that I honestly, to try. yeah, I was disappointed when we're like, okay, that's enough. And I'm like, yeah, it probably is, but <laughs> I'd like to play a little bit more. But they had other stuff there too. One mm -hmm. of them is Whirling Witchcraft. This is a game where you are a bunch of witches brewing up different recipes for magical potions and such. The way it works is you have different cards. Each player has their own unique card, and there are a few different colors of ingredients represented by different colored cubes. And you have cards in your hand that allow you to create recipes using certain combinations of those cubes. The twist here is that at the end of the round, you're going to take any of the cubes that you generated and give them to the player on your right. And each player on their board has only a certain amount of space for each type of cube. And if the person to your right is not able to place the cube, that you gave to them, you then get a point. It doesn't hurt them, but that's how you get a point is by trying to overload you know, the person next to you. And the first person to five points wins. It only takes five points, so the games go really, really quick. They said usually a game is like 15 minutes mm -hmm. or less. Uh, it looked another really unique, interesting kind of a game. That was one of the few that wasn't a prototype. You can actually get that now. They had it at Gen Con, so I can only assume should be up for sale 
online or at your local game store with very as soon as the video goes up. But when I first saw it, it reminded me a lot of when you see like multiplayer Tetris or Poyo Poyo, where it's <laughs> like you do something to throw junk at your opponent. Right, right. Yeah, that is basically the idea of it. Yeah, uh, and you have these really cute little. 3D cardboard cauldrons. Oh, they are adorable, yeah. It's one that looks good on the table. Very small, fast game. This was honestly the one, maybe of the three, that we were going to highlight here that I was most excited to kind of get back and try to play a bunch of rounds of it and get good at it because it seems goofy and silly. <laughs> yes, and luckily, like I said, it is available, so it should be easier to actually do that. Now, another one that we got to see but neither of us played was Rolling Heights. And you're going to have meeples that you roll in a box. If they're standing in some way, not laying down flat, you they are working, so you get to take them out. They're perfectly standing up. They're working really well. Yeah, you actually roll them as if yes. they were dice. I mean roll. <laughs> After you have half of the meeples of your available pool, you can push your luck. And if they all end up flat, you bust. They go on strike. <laughs> but you, then you can also get some more as well. Depending on the color, the meeples do different things. For example, they give you certain building blocks that you can use to build the skyscrapers on certain areas, as well as, of course, maybe manip manipulating other things, getting different land plots, or politician just helping you out and spreading the, your good word. Yeah, and then uh, as the game goes on, you are adding tiles to the board and building up actual little 3D buildings with your little building cubes onto them of various colors. And you'll be able to, you know, get different meeple colors later on to add them to your roll. And again, as the game continues, you actually have this 3D physical representation of a city that looks really cool. This is from uh, John D. Clare, who did stuff like Mystic Veil and Edge of Darkness. So he's done a lot of cool big games. And this is one that has just a great table presence. I mean, they were very excited. They called it like probably their favorite one for Instagram. And I can see why, because it just, that catches your eye. And from the way they described it, it sounds like as you play as a group, win or lose, you feel like you have created something that you can all kind of be proud of and enjoy until you, you know, clean it all up forever. We've actually <laughs> talked about this, how we like it when sometimes even if you lose, you feel like you did something. <laughs> yeah. And this game definitely shows that off. Like you make this really cool landscape and I'm definitely excited to see more of it. Once mm -hmm. again though, prototype, so we'll have to see and wait until they release more information about it. Yeah, I believe this one uh, is scheduled for Kickstarter, so uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, they were also showing off Meeples and Monsters, but we have a whole preview video from that when that was on Kickstarter, yep. so you should go take a look at that. But overall, it seems like AEG has a pretty strong lineup for the next uh, year and a half or so. They talked about yeah. a lot of fun things, even more than what we just got to see in person that mm -hmm. sounded pretty cool. Yeah, they got a lot of cool things in store. They have a dog version of Cat Lady called Dog Lover. And then, of course, plenty of stuff for Smash Up. In fact, as of this recording, the new solo pack based on the Knights of the Round Table is available for Smash Up. But they've also got a 10th anniversary. Yeah, it's been 10 years <laughs> coming up soon. So I'm excited to see what they do to celebrate Smash Up. Yeah, so much in there for you to chew on. Let us know in the comments which of these games you are most excited to try out. You've been watching Roll for Crits coverage of Gen Con 2021. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you to all our patrons on Patreon for supporting us as well. Yeah, we're going to have exclusive coverage of Gen Con at patreon.com slash rollforcrit, or you can find us right here on YouTube at our podcast. All that stuff is at rollforcrit.com slash Gen Con. You don't want to miss it.